Hello friends this is Dr Bharat Vinjamuri from Global Academy of Technology In today's video session we'll be discussing about non-ferrous foundry Casting is a simple inexpensive and versatile way of forming metals into a wide array of products Any solid metal that can be melted can be cast Foundries are the factories that do this casting work One of the major distinctions in specialization is whether foundries work with ferrous metals or non-ferrous metals or both. In today's video session, let us discuss the pros and cons of working with non-ferrous foundries. Ferrous metals are defined as those metals that contain iron. Non-ferrous metals do not contain iron. Aluminum is the most common metal that is casted in non-ferrous foundries. A short list of common non-ferrous metals include precious metals like silver, platinum and gold, copper and its alloys like bronze and brass, nickel, palladium, platinum, titanium, aluminum, tin, lead and zinc with such a wide range of metals in the grouping many of the mechanical properties that can be found in ferrous metals can be obtained from non ferrous metals for example alloys of aluminum or titanium could be substituted for steel in many cases also iron's magnetic abilities could be emulated with nickel and cobalt lighter weight conductivity corrosion resistance non magnetic properties are some of the reasons to choose a non ferrous metals aluminum castings are much widely used in non ferrous foundries aluminum is a metal with a much lower density than iron making it a vital material in applications that need strength without weight aluminum alloys are commonly used in automotive and aerospace industries in the manufacture of engines cylinder heads manifolds they are also used in food packaging cooking equipment frameworks for electronics and appliances window frames doors internal combustion engines and many more Let us now discuss various advantages and disadvantages of aluminum used in non-ferrous foundries. It is a lightweight metal with a specific weight of 2.7 g per centimeter cube. This cuts the cost of manufacturing with aluminum. Again, its use in vehicles reduces dead weight and energy consumption. Aluminum is corrosion resistant. it naturally generates a protective thin oxide coating which keeps the metal from making further contact with the environment the metal is an excellent heat and electricity conductor in contrast to steel which rapidly becomes brittle at low temperatures this metal shows increased tensile strength as temperature drops this metal is non magnetic making it useful for electrical shielding as in case of computer disks dish antennas or magnetic housings the metal is non toxic and is widely used in making cooking utensils it is usually cleaned and does not contaminate the food at any stage and the metal is 100% recyclable and this recycled material is identical to the original product this makes it much more cost effective source material for production the disadvantages of aluminum are the metal is expensive as well as it has got poor wear resistance but still the advantages outnumber the disadvantages and thus making it most widely used material in non ferrous castings Let us now discuss various furnaces 
used to melt non-ferrous metals. Non-ferrous alloys can be melted in a direct or indirect fuel-fired furnace. In a direct fired furnace, the gas is fed directly to the burner, while the airstream provides the need of oxygen for combustion. In an indirect fired heater, the burner is fired into a heat exchanger. Air is heated by passing over the heat exchanger, allowing the combustion byproducts to remain within the heat exchanger. Also, the furnaces like electrical resistant furnace, induction furnace, as well as lift out type crucible furnace can be used to melt non ferrous alloys. Lift out type crucible furnace is one of the oldest and simplest type of furnace used for melting non-ferrous alloys in small volumes. The furnace is illustrated as shown in the figure. In its simplest form, it consists of a crucible made from a refractory material, usually a clay graphite mixture or high temperature steel alloys are used to make a crucible. The crucible itself acts as a ladle which can be easily lifted. The charge placed Inside the crucible is heated through the walls of the crucible by means of heat sources like oil, gas or electricity. After the melt has reached the desired state, the crucible is lifted out of the furnace with tongs and the molten metal is directly poured into the mould. One of the important elements used during aluminum castings are the hardeners. These hardeners are the aluminum master alloys with one or more alloying elements. This hardness consists of an alloy of aluminum and one or more additional elements. Hardness are added to molten aluminum. There are different types of hardeners like calcium, cobalt, copper, chromium, etc. These are mainly used to adjust the chemical composition of aluminum castings to refine the microstructure as well as the grain structure of the castings. These hardness will enhance mechanical as well as physical properties. Also the hardness are used to improve the surface finish. Drossing is a process of separating impurities from molten aluminum. Dross is a mass of solid impurities floating on the surface of low melting point metals such as aluminum, tin, lead, zinc, etc. as a result of oxidation of the molten metal. In case of aluminum castings, the term drossing is specially used to denote the formation of aluminum oxide that is collected on the surface of molten aluminum metal while coming in contact with the air. The dross or the impurities can be minimized when melting is made faster or protecting the molten metal coming in contact with the products of combustion or atmospheric air. Also the oxide layers or the dross can be separated by adding fluxes. Various fluxes like chlorine, fluorine, chlorates are used to separate the oxide layers from aluminum. These fluxes react with oxides and helps to recover aluminum. Fluxing is one of the important stage while working with non-ferrous foundries. Fluxes are used in non-ferrous foundries for the following reasons. They react with the dross and separate the impurities from aluminum. They are used to absorb the impurities in molten metal. They are also used to protect 
the molten aluminum from the atmosphere. The various types of fluxes used are sodium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium fluoride in the following combinations. Flushing is a process of removing entrapped hydrogen in aluminum while casting. Hydrogen is the only gas that is appreciably soluble in aluminum and its alloys. Its solubility varies directly with the temperature. During the cooling of molten aluminum, dissolved hydrogen results in the formation of various defects like pinholes or porosity as shown in the figure. Flushing is a process of removing these dissolved hydrogen by using inert gases like chlorine, nitrogen, helium or argon. These gases are pumped into the liquid metal through graphite tubes. These inert gases will create bubbles which move upwards along with the hydrogen gas dissolved in aluminum which migrates in the form of bubbles to the top surface of the molten metal and thus escapes to the atmosphere. Foundry practice has led to various technological advances with respect to the materials and process from which metals can be efficiently and economically casted. Steel casting is one of the advanced liquid cast metal technology. Stirring action with the molten metal helps in easy mixing and melting of alloys. The schematic representation of stir casting process is illustrated in the figure. The arrangement consists of a furnace in which a graphite crucible is placed. The crucible is surrounded by a coil of copper wire. The crucible holds the charge to be melted. During the process, a powerful alternating current flows through the coil which rapidly induces a magnetic field in the charge. This magnetic field induces a eddy current due to which the molten metal will start melting. During the melting process, the molten metal is stirred continuously by means of stirrer for a short duration. Later, this molten metal is poured into the molds through ladles. The stirring action offers many advantages over other melting process. This stirring action will ensure that the reinforcements or alloys that are added to the molten metal are uniformly distributed over the entire metal. Thus, stir casting process is widely used in many of the industries. The various stages in stir casting process is shown in this figure. Initially, the aluminum ingots are placed inside the graphite crucible. These ingots are melted and once a sufficient temperature is reached, the stirring action will start. Once the stirring is done during the process, the reinforcements or alloys can be added into the molten aluminum. Once the metal is sufficiently heated, this molten aluminum is poured into the molds to form the casted components. And this is how the non-ferrous foundries works. Dear viewers, thank you for watching this video session. We will meet in the next session. Thank you.